Hey everyone, welcome to The Huddle. I am really excited to be here today at the Bentonville, Arkansas Moose Jaw store, which just opened a couple months ago with the CEO, Owen Comerford. And Owen, this has been exciting. We bought this building sometime last year. I don't remember when, I think in the spring and decided let's put a Moose Jaw in Bentonville and it's just doing great. It, it is. It's actually the number one store in our chain since it opened. How about that? Uh, yeah, it's been it's been a, just a great experience. The town has welcomed us with open arms. Um, yeah, it, we. I'm not sure why we didn't do this years ago. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. But but uh, you know, the best time in life to plant a tree is either 20 years ago or today. So right. let's yeah. just let's get it done. But knowing that the store has done so well is exciting, and it's a cycling community with mountain cycling, road cycling, gravel cycling, all kinds of things. We've got snow skiing in here. We've got climbing equipment. We have apparel. We have cycling. So anyway, just talk about the store and and how things are going. It, it's it's really going going well, as you say. A lot of our stores really feed off of outer work because in the in the cold seasons, mainly in the north, you know, it it doesn't get that cold down here. It's a little chilly today, but um, but yeah, no, it's been across the board. From from we're selling a lot of great bikes, but also selling a lot of clothing, footwear, um, and then yeah, to to your to your point, the best is yet to come. And the the funny thing for me is, you know, I thought of Bentonville as well. It's the home of Walmart. But as I've gotten to know the town and know the people that, that work in the store, it's a resort town. You know, it, we, you've got so many people coming in here to, to mountain bike and to, to, to get out and hike. Um, it's just a, it's a great place. And actually, this, this for us, as we look to expand, this is the model. This kind of store, this kind of size, this sort of assortment in a town that has this sort of outdoor bones that, that Ben has. You know, so, so many people over the last couple of years I've, I've met around town, including the, the manager here at the store, who said I came in one weekend just to, to ride bikes for a day or two, and then I gave up what I was doing and I moved here. Now I live here, and it happens all the time. I've heard that story yep. so many times, and to think that it's become a resort town, it's pretty exciting, and it's pretty unique. It is, it, it, it's just, it's amazing over the last number. I mean, this is what, the last three, four years that this has really come, Real, come to Really pass? exploded, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has. And, you know, so many things that you, you do here outside of whether you're, you're employed with, with us at Walmart or one of the other companies, but there's a spirit that's building with entrepreneurs and hospitality. And if you get on a bike here at the store and ride about 500 yards north, you can be on a mountain bike trail, go another 500 yards, and you're, you can be out of town on gravel roads for miles and miles. So lots of variety. But let's talk about the brand. Um, what was the founder's inspiration for the name, the brand? how it came together, and then let, we'll get to 2017 in just a second when you became part of the company. But let's talk about the brand and how it got started. Sure, so, so Moose Jaw actually uh, was founded by a guy called Robert Wolf, and he, was, he had just graduated from college at University of Michigan, um, and he was guiding, and he realized pretty quickly that the people he was taking on the trip were spending more on the gear than they were on his services. So he said, I gotta open a store. Um, they picked the name uh, actually pretty randomly. They just looked at a map, and that's a cool name, Moose, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Um, ultimately, actually, ended up buying the URL, Musho.com from the the mayor of the town for five thousand dollars in merchandise credit. So so they're Musho.ca, we're Musho.com, um, and then grew from there. But but the the whole brand itself, the ethos of the brand, which is you know love the madness, don't take yourself so seriously. It's really a personification of of Robert and just the kind of person that he was, um, and that brand voice was really his voice. Uh, and then from there, you know. It's just become who we are, right? It's it's how we speak to our customers, how we engage, it's how we think about retail. It's just you know, life is short, have fun, right? There's, you know, we're we're not doing brain surgery here. We should be having a good time. Yeah, I love that. Don't take yourself too seriously. And and there's so many people now who are are really focused on obviously doing a great job and fulfilling their purpose in their in their career. But also just blending it together with life and some other things. So, what are the what are the product trends and categories that have really changed the last few years that that you would say are probably a reflection of 2020, 2021? But you know, what are the trends that you're seeing with with customers? Just more people wanting to get outdoors. Um, I, I think part of it is people being at home and you, you know they're in their home office or whatever during the day and they want to get out, so they start walking, and then from there they want to get biking and maybe hiking. Uh, Camping has really blown up. You're outdoors, you're in the fresh air, uh, you're away from other people, um, you have all your own stuff. Uh, so camping has been, has been great. Um, biking, that's been huge. Uh, hiking footwear, 
uh, has been has been great as people are hiking. But yes, yeah, so many people just rediscovering the outdoors, and you know, now our job, quite frankly, is to is to keep them keep them in the outdoors, welcome them into the outdoors, um, and and take from there. I, I think one of one of the challenges we see is the lack of diversity in the outdoors, quite frankly, and so that's one of the things that we've taken on as a, our core pillars: sustainability and inclusivity are, are just everything that we we talk about in terms of of how we make the outdoors a better experience. So Walmart, we're focused on uh, sourcing from diverse suppliers. We've we purchased about thirteen billion dollars last year of goods from diverse suppliers. So I totally agree with you and. You know, you think about the customer trends, last couple of years we've seen an explosion in the number of people who are cycling, running, fishing was another category, camping, and then I hear a lot about glamping, glamorous yep. camping. Yep. Um, if you, but <laughs> the point of that is that if you haven't done any of those things and you want to, some of the sports that are in here that we look as we look around today, whether it's mountain biking or rock climbing, snow skiing, which is also selling well here in Arkansas, um, you know, how does a person get started and how do you get past that, that first feeling of intimidation and not knowing what to do? Do you start online with Moose John, you're working at the store, come in the store, what's the best recommendation you have? So, if you're near a Moose John store, come into a Moose John store, absolutely. Because one of the things that we've, it's part of the, the don't take yourself so seriously mantra, is we, we try to break down that intimidation factor. Because there are lots, unfortunately, of outdoor, outdoor stores or bike stores where you, you go in and if you don't know what to ask, you feel like a bit of a fool. And we, we try to be the opposite of that. Let's in, invite people in. There are no dumb questions and we, we'll, we'll talk it through. Um, we have a knowledge base that we have on our site to help people to introduce them to the outdoors. Um, and then the other pieces that we're trying to do, we're, we're launching a rental program to, to break down that first barrier because gear is expensive if you want to get quality gear to get outdoors and if you don't if you get if you don't get quality gear maybe that first experience isn't good and yeah then what if you don't do it again um, and then with the other thing that we're doing and this came out of the pandemic is we're, we're leveraging those store associates and all of the knowledge that they have to help our, our online customers they're called gear wizards and so you'll get on a call um, and you'll get one of our gear wizards maybe somebody from the Bentonville store here who, who can take you through you know what you want in a bike what you want in a tent um, when you do rentals, you get a gear wizard consultation as part of that process. So you know how to set up the tent correctly. You know, you know what, what you what you need because maybe you're, you've rented stuff and you forgot to, you forgot a, a pad you get for for your sleeping bag and you're laying on the ground. Not a great experience. So there's just lots of ways I think we can leverage all of the tools that we have in Moose to make it better for people. Well, and there's a learning curve, as you know, to so many of these sports. And if it were easy, everyone would do them. Right. <clears throat> so it does take a bit of learning. I remember when I first started cycling, my, my most common mishap was forgetting that my feet were clipped in. Yeah. And coming up to a stop sign and just falling over in front of my friends, which is embarrassing. But it happens, and eventually you learn not to do that anymore. Absolutely. And, and actually, we have, we, have a, we have a solution for that coming, too. <laughs> I heard about that. So we, we do something called the Moose Outdoor Accelerator, where we bring really look to incubate new brands for the outdoors, um, focused actually on, on diversity, we're, so we're trying to help underrepresented groups there. But one of the, the brands that we're helping launch in the next couple of months is called Hustle Bike Labs, and they have this really cool magnetic pedal, which is, it's, it takes clipless to a whole, whole new level. Yeah, yeah, I, there are a number of times in my life I remember not remembering, not getting your foot out on time, and yeah. Yeah, I could show you the scars and tell you about the, the wrecks, but anyway, part of it, so we'll, we'll get through it. Well, the store looks great, and I'm really excited that you are um, a part of not only the company, but the community. That started in 2017 yeah. um, with an acquisition, so you want to talk about that and then and then what the journey's been like since that time sure um it's been it's been a it's been a fun ride uh so initially we were brought on board to to help with the the outdoor category online so so i helped to run that as from a merchandising perspective for the first couple of years um and that was that was really that was really great and being part of that and the the the, the revolution that went on with 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 walmart.com um, and then since then, really have been more focused on, on taking the Moose Jaw brand to the next level. Uh, and we're working on some store expansion strategies um, and also some private brand, Moose Jaw brand expansion, which we're really excited about, which we really couldn't have done without Walmart. Um, working with Walmart stores to do that as, that as well. So um, our customers are going to see a lot more of Moose Jaw and the Moose Jaw brand in the coming years as we, as we really look to to leverage all of all that Walmart can bring to the table. Well, it's exciting, but but also these stores you're you're also thinking about expanding this footprint as you said earlier. This this could be the model. So, 
you know, keeping the brand in a space where it can run and live on its own is important. And then there may be things we learn and can work on across the brands. But, you know, talk about this, this format and what you think it can be. Historically, our format was a smaller format and really more focused on high camp climb. Um, this format, though, we really love it because it is, it's bigger. It's about 6,000 square feet. Um, and we have the full range of activities from biking, road biking, gravel, mountain biking to, to ski, skiing in Arkansas. It, it's, it's a thing. Well, it isn't, but we've got lots of skiers in, in, <laughs> That's in, right. in Bentonville. <laughs> we all uh, travel to ski. Exactly. Um, but then climbing, uh, and then we also have the, you know, the hike camp piece. Um, we're going to bring in some water sports for the summer. Uh, but I think the keys to the model here are having, having all of those activities with really great authentic brands that support those activities, but be a, a market where there is access to the outdoors right in the, in the backyard and you've got so many people that just want to be outdoors. And so, whereas in the past we looked at you know, more major market approaches, we talked about this being a resort town, that's really what we're looking at, are those towns where people can just get outdoors. Yeah, the active lifestyle. Well, the store looks great, certainly looks great. Um, fantastic results, so congratulations on that and looking, to, looking forward to a lot more in the future. So thanks for coming on and taking the time and looking forward to a great year. Great. Thanks, Joe. Right, thanks, thanks, everybody. everybody.